making a custom one-of-a-kind backgammon board. Do you want to see how it's done? I start out in AutoCAD. To determine the size of the board, I will need to know what size checker I will use. The inch and a half diameter seems to be a good size. So with the checker at an inch and a half, the triangles at the widest are an inch and a half plus a sixteenth for space. One and nine sixteenths wide and the height of the triangles are five times the checker diameter or seven and a half inches tall. To determine the size of the board, I will need six times the triangle plus a place for chip storage with a quarter inch separator. Now I test the layout to make sure it all will work. This will give you some idea of my design process. I will be cutting the veneer using a Cricut Maker die cutting machine. This is like a CNC for paper and many other materials. Now this is the closest thing I will come to a CNC for home, even though at my work I program three nesting CNC routers for a large production shop. Once I have the layout, I take a polyline and save it as a DFX file. Then I convert it to an SVG format. I just use any of the free online converters. In the Cricut design software, I import my files. Next, I adjust the size to my layout. The Cricut has a size limitation of 11 and a half inches wide. Keep that in mind when you're designing something. One thing I don't like about the Cricut software is the machine cuts by material name rather than how thick it is. There are different thicknesses of veneer, some with paper backing and some without. It would be better if you could just tell it what thickness you want to cut. So I choose wood veneer and I select the more. I wish I could add just a little more, but I don't have that option. Using a 12 by 24 inch deep stick mat, I run tape all along the edges to prevent any movement of the veneer. It will take several passes to make the cut. It did surprisingly well. I still had to use a knife to release some of them, but it's way better than cutting by hand. The possibilities are exciting with this machine. I used a sticky mat to lay down my parts to tape them together for the glue up. This works out great to keep the veneer in place. I'm gluing to quarter inch MDF with maple veneer already on two sides. I roll the glue on both the veneer and the board and roll out any air with a wallpaper roller. I clamp it up between wax paper and plywood. Now with any veneer work, you need to balance your layup with veneer on the other side. This will balance the board to avoid any warpage. The outer frame will be 5 8 thick walnut. I need to make it deep enough so when the board closes it will hold the checkers in place. After the dados and the miters are cut, I put the parts together using clear packing tape to hold the corners for gluing. When the glue is dry, the case is cut in half on the table saw. Now I glue in the checker dividers, making sure they will fit. On the ends of the triangles, I make a fitted trim block to keep the checkers in line. This is done by drilling holes and recutting and shaping the block. In part two of this video, see how I incorporated the Mandela design and made the Corian checkers and the dice and the custom dice cups. 
If you like this video, please show me and hit the like button and subscribe to my channel to see more.